Hey everybody, we are at the CUNE Academy by 124 in Atlanta, Georgia, and we are backstage where they are prepping for tonight's huge trend release. And we are here with Colorboy Geo, aka George Alderetti, who is using Fine. CUNE Tinticolor, which is new. Yep, brand new, which is brand launching new. it today. And it's here. And you're going to demo for us this washed wood technique. So tell us about what's happening here. Hi everybody, uh, so what we're doing is we're going to uh, share with everybody a launch one of our new trend releases for fall and it's called Wash Wood and that's the influence of beachy washed wood hair. So that's uh, why we're using our 821 which is a beautiful pearl ash. Uh, it's on, it's got a little bit of more of a pearl beige with a little bit of ash coolness to it. So it really gives a nice balance to the hair color. And what we're going to use is we're going to alternate that with our cream bleach. The technique is really simple. We're working on the um, interior of the top uh, with six little uh, really nice rectangles and then a big diamond pattern on the very center. And we're just going to work diagonal forward this way, diagonal back this way, and just work all the way around to create that dimensional texture that you want to see in the color. So that's going to be our washed wood technique. Okay. You're going to see a lot of different variations of color throughout. So when we're why done. do you choose to work with foils in this in this color? The isolation is really good because it gives you more control, and it out, actually act, helps to create that dimension that you want to see in the movement that you want to see in the color. So okay. for isolations, it's great. There are a few solid pieces that we freehand mm -hmm. in the technique, so you get a little bit of both. Okay. Because we're doing a lot of freehand color right now, a lot of hand painting. So this will give you both the feeling of dimensional color with isolation and freehand with the solid pieces that you're going to be working with out uh, throughout the uh, hair. Now is there a developer in this as well? There is. So we're using the A21 with uh, 30 volume okay. developer and, and our, cle the our cream bleach is with 20 volume Tinta Cream developer. Okay, so can you show me what kind of sections you're taking? Sure. So working on the top, we're going to work across this section. We're going to take really fine can you guys see okay? Slices. And what's important is when you already have existing color, mm -hmm. you want to work it through, not all the way. You want to work it to the end. We're going to take that slice. It's a diagonal slice, so you can see it's really fine. We're going to take this 821. We're going to work that through. And I'm just going to take vertical brush strokes to blend it in so that you get a nice blend throughout. We're going to take that hair out of the foil and then we're going to isolate it just like this. The next section right next to that back to back is going to take another slice. And this one's going to be the cream. Now if you opt to do back to back open face foil you can do that as well and that's just a little bit quicker but I need a little bit more control. So what is the consistency of your lightener right now? I would say it's a consistency of like marshmallow cream. Okay, like a fluff? Like a fluff. Okay. Uh, that's the consistency I like to use. Now, do you have a preference on color brush? Like, because so often we hear it's all about the brush and the application. It's really true, and it depends on what kind of technique I'm doing. So if I'm doing a hand painting, I like a more stiff, short, bristled brush um, to blend it in, and a dry brush also to do some blending. If I'm doing traditional application like you see here, um, I like a wider brush to give me enough color to work through that length okay. of hair that I'm working with. So what is the mixing ratio of this? So this is equal parts. Okay. So one part color to one part of your developer. Mm -hmm. And over here we have one part of a scoop of your lightener mm -hmm. with um, one and a half parts of your developer to give you that consistency and lift. Okay, and what's the processing time on this? Processing time for me traditionally is after my last foil, 30 minutes. Okay. Room temperature, no heat. Okay, now is there ever ways to break those rules and what kind of effect would you get if you put it under heat? Uh, there are ways to break the rules, and I know you do what you do out there mm -hmm. in your own salon environment. <laughs> so if it works for you and it's doing what you need it to do, then you go right ahead. Okay. Um, but for me, I recommend no heat, okay. and traditionally that works best at room temperature for me. Okay, so I'm going to let you do your work. I'm All just right. going to kind of follow around here. So for somebody that's doing this in their salon, let's say they're based not on one of the coasts, just in your average high-performing community salon, what would you expect a service like this to cost and how long should the colorist book out for it? Oh, great question. Uh, for me, booking time is important. So I would usually recommend for somebody that's going to be doing a, a complete color application like this, 
uh, 45 minutes mm -hmm. in your booking time and then always remember you have your processing time and your rinsing time that gives you time in your color process to go ahead and book another client in between which is really good for me I'm just color only mm -hmm. so I get to book on the 45 okay. uh, for those of you that are doing both you can book 45 and then slip in a haircut and then go back to your processing time which works really great pricing depends on your market usually on the average about 110 on up okay and then what's like an at-home ritual that's at home Goodness. ritual is important, so that's going to be home maintenance, shampoo, uh, color care shampoo, and a treatment. So something that you can always, here's my philosophy, always put back in what you're taking out. Because you know that we're damaging the hair with thermal, we're damaging it with color. So it's really good to get a at home treatment, something that they can do once a week. So when they come back for your visit, the hair is in optimum shape and you can always work with it. And you always keep that integrity, it's important. Okay, so while you're working here, Let's say there is like a high-powered woman who comes in on her lunch break, wants to do something similar to this distress technique, but she just doesn't have time for a full head of foils. How can you abbreviate this technique to fit her? So this is perfect because this technique is actually on the surface only with everything being glazed into underneath. Oh, there's underneath. nothing happening under Right, there? so all of this will be then blended in, working on the top. Uh, so working with Lucy before, we wanted to create a little bit more oomph under color, so we actually did more of a full application. Mm -hmm. But for somebody that wants to save time, Washwood, when you get our step-by-step -step and our DVD it comes together, it just shows you the surface working within that diamond pattern mm -hmm. and those random triangles that I was talking about before. All right, so, so it's very simple. So Kristen just joined us and she's asking about which color line we're using. We are using the new Kuhn Tinta Color, which is 8.21. And here is the consistency. You can see it right here. This is mixed with 30 volume developer. And then here is the cream lightener, which is sort of like a marshmallow fluff consistency too. And we are here with George, who's doing this demo for us. Just kind of working his way through the hair. Now, is there a way you can sort of, instead of just, um, oh, sorry about that, Diane. Um, is there a way that you can um, mix it up? Like if you wanted to put your own signature twist on it instead of alternating, could you do like three lightener, three you can. one? So let's just say, for instance, you want to do something like that right now. I'll give you a quick example. Everything right here is the 821. So that's going to be a nice level eight. And you want to maybe take those ends and lighten them up a little bit. You can always take a foil, slide it underneath. And then you can take your cream and do a little nice application in throughout the ends. So you get that beautiful diffusion of dark, medium, and light. You can customize it that way. And then I would just take my foil, place it right directly on top. Kristen's asking what her base level is. Her natural level is a level five. And that's something that we have really... Um, have some trouble with sometimes. So you have to be sure about what your natural level is. So um, we decided on, in the consultation that she's a natural level five. Okay. You guys have any other questions for George? Great question. Thank you guys. I like how you just elongated the foil like that rather than yeah, having you can tear keep off it tear and it, it just saves some time. Mm -hmm. So it's another approach. But make sure that you lock them in, especially if you do any painting in between with, say, a demi-permanent to create a nice glaze in between. Just make sure you lock them on the top so that you can move them around and work with them. Okay. Now, do you happen to switch, you know, volumes based on where you are in the head and how... I just did. Okay. So everything down here was 20, and then we moved up to a 30 volume of, to the top. Okay. So you do get that nice graduation, dark, medium to light, naturally. And that's why we call it washed wood. Okay. All right, guys, any other questions? You guys are doing great. <laughs> All right, we're going to walk over here this way, take a little tour. Hi, guys. Oh, all right, we're going to sign off for now and start a new scope. Thanks.